Morning, y'all. Monday morning. Thanks, coach. And we're going to talk power leaks today. We've been doing lots of talking about strokes gained recently. Lots of people really getting into it. But then the stumbling block for lots of people is that they just don't feel like they can hit it any further, which I understand. You know, they're, they're not going to bomb it 300 yards. So let's talk about the power leaks. So to give you an example, I, over the years of coaching, have not taught many golfers who are maxing out their smash factor. So maxing out their efficiency. They're often leaking power in many different ways. So we're gonna talk about some of the ways that you might be losing power. So you don't have to swing any faster, but you could get considerably more out of your golf. But none of these methods are, well, you're gonna need knowledge to improve. They're gonna cost you a bit to get the knowledge, possibly having lessons, but they're obtainable, like very obtainable. Right, so let's start by talking about smash factor. So smash factor is a term you'll hear a lot, certainly if you go for lessons with launch monitors, and basically all it is, it's your ball speed, so ball off the face speed divided by the club head speed. So that ball can only come off the face at a speed relative to how much energy you put in. If there is more ball speed coming off, that's where we start getting into the illegal driver discussions and debates. So your illegal driver, a bit of spring, it's adding more ball speed for how much you're putting in. So in effect, giving you too much help. Now where there are plenty of amateurs out there who don't swing it fast enough, there are ones who don't swing it fast enough, a big percentage, who then have serious power leaks. So they get too much deflection in there. To give you an idea, I could swing at 100 miles an hour and I could deliver 60 degrees of loft with my driver for argument's sake. That would be extreme. So 100 miles an hour, the ball speed that I get with 60 degrees of loft with my driver is gonna be very different to if I deliver, say, 15 degrees of loft hitting five up. So it gives me a 10 degree spin loft. If you think about max smash factors, if you were to have no deflection, zero loft, zero path, zero up or down, you're gonna get your max hit. You wouldn't get your launches and what have you, so you do need a bit of deflection because we need some launch or a lot of speed. So again, you can think about firing a gun out of a barrel, no spin as such, certainly not back. It's gonna give you max velocity for the energy that you put in coming out. So as soon as you start adding deflections, more loft, so smash factor just drops off through the bag, seven iron wedges, it naturally just comes down because there's deflection. But then there's other things that can cause deflection, isn't there? You could be adding loft, you could be cutting balls, you could be taking loft off. There's lots of ways to not get the most out of what you put in. Let's get the torquey just to try and show you a few of these ways. Right, so let's play with this idea of deflection, smash factor, and how you're possibly leaving loads of kind of yardage on the table with some simple ideas around maybe fixing some deliveries you could gain quite a huge amount of yardage. Right, I've got a TS3 and TS2, one set um, at 13.5 degrees loft, two, and the TS3 is at 9.5, it hasn't actually got my shaft in, um, Matt's in here at 9.30, so I'm just trying to get this done. Don't worry that they're different heads, I get the same numbers pretty much out of these heads, don't worry that they're different shafts. Please. So I'm going to go 13 and a half degree to kick us off, and I'm just going to hit my normal swing. Don't try and react to the loft. I'm just going to hit the ball with my normal swing on it. Second shot, I'm going to hit with my TS3 9.5, same length shaft as the other one, and again my normal swing. So we don't have a warm up, cool down kind of discretion in the numbers. I'm just going to alternate between the two. And we'll see the difference flicking around. Back to the 13 and a half. One more on my TS3. Other drivers are available. Just not as good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a slight miss it. Oh, let's look at the numbers there. Bit of a healy one. So the last one went a little left. So obviously we're flicking between each driver. So look at the efficiency change. So 139, then with my 9.5, 143, then down to 138, then up at 145, one that I felt like I missed here. 
efficiency obviously is your smash factor number. 238 going up then to 265, then back down to 247, then up to 262. Now first swing 102, a bit slower, then 106, then 104, then 105. So let's do a couple more and see if we can get those club head speeds similar. Club path staying constant, into out 1.6, 2.5, 2.7, 2.3. Loft jumping, obviously, 23, 19, 20, 19. So obviously these are two different drivers. You could see this is a custom fit message. But for me, if you've got two identical players, one delivering 20 degrees of dynamic loft, up to 23, the other being able to deliver 20s and 19s, everything else being equal, they're going to get a better smash, they're going to gain extra distance. Right, I'm going to hit the 13 again, just try and get that club head speed up. In fact, I'm going to hit the 13 until I get a club head speed that matches the 106s. So that's a 105 club head speed. Pretty decent shot, again, nice and straight. An efficiency of 144. So if we pick two, it's 104.7 and a 105. Let's pick those last two, look, if we just disable these kids. Ball speed's different by three miles an hour. And then what, 242 to 262. It's 20 yards difference. Into out 2.5 into our 1.8 slight difference in the club face but these two are very similar that one very similar 0.5 in this one and this driver was number two just longer 265 so simple power loss if you can't control the dynamic loft you deliver you can look at every driver in the world to gain two or three yards over one over the other and that's not really measurable 20 yards we're talking when we start moving the loft on these two clubs. I'm obviously talking static loft, this so makes me swing the same, you see what I mean? I could do this dynamically as well, but it's the same thing. I'm changing my dynamic loft by changing the statics. Lots of golfers I teach most really struggle to control their dynamic loft with any club, let alone a driver. And there are massive gains, there are huge power leaks, and they can't control loft. Let's put another little twist on this as well then. Same two clubs, same two matchups. I'm going to try and go at the same speed as much as I can. TS2, the guy we're presenting the more loft, is also going to cut the ball. This guy hitting a TS3, he's going to hit the normal draw shot. So I'm going to do my normal swing with this one, I'm going to do my normal cut swing with this one. So 13 and a half, I'm going to hit a functional fade as hard as I can. That's close to the line. You see how much cut it had on it. So you can see it's a little feather fade. I've hit that really good, to be honest. That's like my perfect fade. Efficiency, 142, pretty good. Loads of spin because of the loft. Going too high, carrying 242 is all I'm getting out of that. Right, now I'm gonna hit my normal, at the moment, bigger shoulder turn. I did my big shoulder turn on that one, but drawing shape. Turning left, so it's a bit left of target, but it's still quite functional. Left side, left kind of rough at worst. You can see it drawing. So 1.46 in smash, that's gone up. I'm two out, I'm two into out, and three out to win my fade to my draw. And then you've also got 1.0 open, 1.8 close the path. Face it's almost identical flip fade to draw numbers. 242 to 268. So much longer carries. That big shoulder turn is giving me more distance on the fly. Club head speeds within one mile an hour of each other. So player one, player two, which one's gonna go and buy a new driver? Which one's gonna think, I feel like I'm swinging as hard as player two, but we don't get the same result. They're not even close to getting the same results because of the power leaks through technique. Again, what is it? Like 20 yards difference. It's huge. There's no driver out there. Let me put this out there. There is no driver out there that gives you an extra 20 yards unless the driver you're using is just really poorly fit in the, in the first place. If you've got a well-fit driver from last year, bought within the last five years, you are not gaining 20 yards. If you are, you need to severely ask why. Just a little side note. You need to ask your fitter, how is that even possible? I'm gaining yards there from technique. 
I'm getting rid of my power leaks to try and maximise what I get out of what I put in. So let's think about the gains that you can get with your driver. I mean, in the studio in there I'm talking about out to in, more loft, you've got hitting down, hitting up, those ideas can change how much efficiency you'll get out of the effort you're putting in. But what happens if you've got someone with a driver, say, who's losing efficiency, presenting too much loft, not only does that then contribute to often the direction, because if you're controlling, if you can't control loft, there's a good chance you can't control face the path, because they're all very much connected in this three dimensional space of impact. Let's say you fix that with the driver, you give them seven, 10, 20 yards in the instance of what I was showing you inside. But that's not the only gains that you make, because quite often if you can make 20 yards on your driver, then you can then find another five to seven if you like on your iron delivery because that delivery probably isn't perfectly efficient either if you're losing efficiency with your driver me and matt once did a video where we put our drives in the spot that rory and dj hit theirs so we worked out they were 35 yards longer than us say or 50 yards whatever the number was so we moved our balls forward to that spot but then we were about to play our second shots and we realised pretty quickly that this isn't right because let's say that moves us on a par 5 to 200 yards out. Well, I'm hitting a 23 degree hybrid. They're probably in a 6 iron. So we had to move forward again so I could hit a 6 iron to give a true representation of the gains that they were getting. It's not just the gains that you get off the tee. It's then the gains that you get with your second shot as well if that impact improves. That's a duff. Go in something. Now obviously this is before we start going into chipping, putting, those ideas. But when you come to wanting to hit the ball further, I think the knee-jerk reaction for most golfers is out there is to think, well, you know, companies talk about tech so much. It must be the tech, you know, it's they're in it further because of all the tech. Absolutely not. Interesting idea for you, which I've talked about with a couple of really good coaches, actually, um, who said that, so Trapman measured loads of tour players when they first came on the scene, and they measured the average attack angle of a tour player was one down, for instance. That was what it was measured at. So the average attack angle of a female player, I think, was two up where the males were one down. A great idea or reflection of how the shorter on tour hitters on averages are trying to maximize by hitting up where the men's tour where they've got strength coming from plenty of speed they don't have to max out is the kind of idea there it would be very interesting to know what the average attack angle is now on tour because they're all trying to max out because they're not all DJ and Rory and they want to be Bubba and DJ and Rory those distances. I've been on plenty of tour ranges and guys are trying to find 5, 10 yards, 15 yards as well like you all are. And quite often I'm not there looking at a shaft or a different head and a different weighted head where I look at the numbers and just think you're hitting two down at that bruh. Like you're a skilled player, you can hit two up and there's like 7 or 12 yards for you in there. And that's some of the best players in the world. The most amateurs that I've taught through my life and still now, the power leaks are just huge, yet they have questions about should I be using that driver or this driver? I think it's always such an interesting, almost a card trick that the world of golf plays on you all. Post comments down below, do you know if you've got power leaks or not? Are you maxing out? I would love to hear down there. Great example of this, Dan and Matt both hitting it down when we measure on launch monitors and go and play, they're not as past me as they should be. They both now start trying to hit up. They found a swing and movement that has helped them, Matt and Dan, and they're now comfortably past me when they get it, when they get that delivery. That's not through tech. That's literally in the last two years and we're able to measure an impact and improve on it. You have all got, I would wager the average would be around 15 yards, I reckon, of gains that most people watching this video have got in them if they choose to change their technique. Let me know down below as always, thanks for watching. Let's stop leaking that power, shall we? It'd be all much easier if we all just did it further, wouldn't it?